us pray. Lord God, thank you for this story of the birth of Jesus and of persons who realized from the time that it happened that something had changed in the world that was worthy of their searching and their worship. Will you help us, Lord, to be captured by that same sense that we might search for Jesus and find him and grow in his presence and honor him with our lives. And may my words this morning and our meditations about those words and more importantly, the times throughout our week when we have opportunity to recall those words and put them into action in the quality of our relationships, in the investments of our time and energy, in the focus of our thoughts and lives. Uh, may all these things be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. S searching. This morning I'd like to speak with you about the human activity of searching and begin with this question, what are you searching for? And I suspect that there are some people here whose favorite colors are green and white who are searching for grief counseling this morning. Uh, and uh, there may be persons here whose favorite color are maize and blue who are searching for a continuation of their New Year's party. <laughs> um, I'd like to speak with you about searching. I, I learned about um, some things about searching this week. It was a couple of days before Christmas and Nancy and I got a phone call from a dear friend in Burkittsville, Maryland. Uh, we had known them some years ago when I pastored another church. Uh, Sharon was the chair of our finance committee and director of our bell choir. And when they relocated in 2005 out east, uh, we stayed in contact. Uh, that contact was facilitated by the fact that they, they lived in suburban Washington, D.C., and our son Michael enrolled at American University in Washington, and they became surrogate parents to Michael on his visits east. They let him store all of his accumulated stuff in their garage in the summers between his years so we didn't have to haul him out to Washington and back each year. And in 2011, I had the privilege of marrying um, Sharon and Pat's daughter to her husband Adam on the porch of the Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island. And we were um, stunned, as Sharon was, by her announcement that her husband Pat uh, had dropped dead of a massive heart attack, and would it be possible for Nancy and me to come out to perform the funeral in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Sharon's hometown? We took a look at the calendar, and the church office was closed, and for the first time almost all year, there was not a whole lot on my agenda, and so we said yes. And so last Sunday after church, we got in the car and we drove out to Burkittsville, Maryland. Uh, and we arrived there on Monday at 1 o'clock, spent 90 minutes with the family, uh, asking them to tell Pat stories. And we um, I took good notes. And then Nancy and I continued on to Gettysburg, where the funeral was to be held on Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. And we holed up in a motel in Gettysburg, and I went to work on my computer, comp taking the notes that I'd taken from the family to uh, put together a funeral service. And th there were some elements in Pat's life that I, I wanted more information about. Here I was in a strange community <laughs> at an odd time in a, in a motel room and uh, Pat was born in 1948. 
And so I got on my computer and hooked up to the internet and was able to search 1948. You know what happened in 1948? I, I found out. Uh, 1948 was when the nation of Israel was born. 1948 was when the 33rd president of the United States, Harry Truman, uh, raised taxes to help pay for the Marshall Plan, which rebuilt Europe at the end of World War II. 1948 was when um, a new invention came on the market that uh, called a hand dryer, an electric hand dryer that we have in public restrooms. I, I, I needed to know that. Uh, 1948 was when a man named Babe Ruth played his last baseball game as a New York Yankee. Um, and then I, I was doing some more work and discovered that uh, Pat was from Red Oak, Iowa. Anybody here ever been to Red Oak, Iowa? I had not a clue where he was from. I searched that out on the internet. I discovered Red Oak, Iowa is a town of uh, four square miles, about 10,000 people in southwestern Iowa. It was once on a major rail line between Chicago and Omaha, Nebraska. And it, it's famous um, as the town of heroes, named so because during World War II, Red Oak, Iowa offered more of her sons and daughters who paid the ultimate price in defense of our country in World War II per capita than any other place in the United States. Um, I, I found that out with a, with a search. And then an important element in Pat's life after he went east, there was a shooting in 2007 in Blacksburg, Virginia called the Virginia Tech Massacre and Pat was the one that the community called to, to come in to help with the after event debriefing, evaluation, and security and safety planning for the future so that the community might be better prepared if one of those disasters ever happened again. I was able to search from that motel room and get that information. Um, s searching is a human activity that is a part of our normal existence. We are always at some point searching for something. I, I, I know that there are high school seniors who are part of this community of faith who at this point in their life, if, if they haven't already been searching, are searching for what's going to come next in the spring after they get their diploma. I have a very good friend who's unemployed who has been searching diligently for that next job and people who are lonely who are searching for companionship. Uh, what, what about you? Are, are you searching and if so, what for? There is a, uh, a couple of people, uh, Thomas Peters and Robert Waterman, who some time ago wrote a best-selling book called In Search of Excellence, a look at America's best-run corporations. And they made the observation in that book that um, we are all searching for at least two things. We as human beings, we're searching for affirmation. Each one of us has inside of us a desire to be recognized and noticed and affirmed and lifted up like the, the player at the end of the big game and recognized as the most valuable player as a star in our own right. Each human being has that desire to be so loved for who we are. And another thing that they mentioned that human beings have an instinctive desire, we, we, we're searching to be part of something that's bigger than ourselves. Uh, we all want to be part of uh, some kind of mission or ministry or team effort that uh, allows us to use our talents in such a way that they're fulfilled. And if Peters and Waterman are right, then this story in the Bible of one of the greatest searches of all time um, really has s special meaning. Remember the search? It was conducted by uh, a group of magi 
uh, we've given the term uh, wise men or kings that get associated with it. We don't really know who the wise men were or how many of them there were, but because there are three gifts, uh, Christian tradition has come up with three of them. They came from some distance. The Bible just says from the east. Tradition names them as Balthazar from Babylon, Melchior from Persia, and Caspar from India. Uh, their journey, uh, and, and this just baffles me that they were able to find a star that they noticed from their position in the east in a, in a sky that when you can see them is full of billions of stars. They, they recognized that there was one that was new and was special and was announcing the arrival of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and that that star was something that they had to search for and follow till they found the child to honor him. Um, their entourage came to the capital city in Jerusalem. They went to the palace of Herod the Great, and they came to acknowledge and honor the royal baby. There was no royal baby. Herod had his advisors do a, a search of the ancient texts. And there they uncovered passages such as the one we read today from Second Samuel, announcing God's preference for a Davidic dynasty that was 500 years in duration, and it had been 500 years since a Davidic king had ruled. Uh, but Herod sent the wise men on their way to Bethlehem, asking them to search diligently in that community to see if they could find such a child, and they did. And when they found the baby... They honored him with their gifts, royal gifts, fit for a king, and they worshiped him. It occurred to me that as people of faith, searching for Jesus needs to be a part of our ongoing life. Um, searching for the spirit of Christ, the love of Christ, growing in our knowledge of Christ and our service for him. Over the past six months, there's been a group of people who've been meeting regularly here at Church of the Dunes, tasked by our Adult Ministries Council with something called charting a course for discipleship. Uh, we wanted to lay out a a map so that anybody at any age or stage in their life um, could take a look at the map and say, okay, where am I in my course of discipleship and what next steps can I take to continue in the growth of my faith? Uh, this group evaluated all of the pages of activities and ministries and missions that go on in the life of this church and uh, came up with a map uh, that because we're um, located close to the water, it made sense to us to um, have the map be uh, akin to uh, learning how to swim, <laughs> that uh, the, the course of Christian discipleship as we understand it is a, a lot like learning how to swim. We recognize that most people when they come to church for the very first time um, are often coming because their life is in some sort of flux or transition and they're searching for help, for community, for comfort, for peace, for meaning. Uh, people who move, people who've received difficult diagnosis, people who've changed their relationships, people who've changed jobs, people who have a, a big burden they're carrying around often show up and their primary need initially is for help and for welcome and for hospitality and affirmation. 
but, but we also know that at a certain point, um, when we are done receiving our help and we're ready to grow as disciples, that uh, like a beginning swimmer, we need to put our toe in the water. Uh, these are activities in the life of a growth of a disciple that don't take a lot of risk and they don't take a lot of effort and they can be kind of fun like coming to dinner on Wednesday night at the church or going down for coffee after church or showing up in worship or um, reading, uh, reading an article in the newsletter. These are elements that introduce us to faith. Uh, the next step though, after you dip your toe in the water, um, sooner or later people say, hey, you know what, I, I think I'd like to get in the water <laughs> and, and get in all the way. And so uh, there, there are steps that we can take as disciples of Jesus to move from those initial efforts into growing our faith. And those are things that require a little more effort and a little more risk. Um, things like um, going to a Sunday school class with Ed Leister on Sunday morning. <laughs> Um, or saying, you know what, I, I think I'd like to sing in the choir, or um, perhaps I'd like to volunteer for an activity, uh, just a short term, but maybe uh, give some time of myself for uh, an activity like Family Promise or Kids Hope. Uh, there are moments in discipleship, however, when we need to move beyond just those initial efforts if we're going to continue to grow and discover who Christ is for us and learn how to swim out in the deep water. Uh, it's a little more risky if you've ever taken swimming lessons. Y you know you have to, have to develop some, some skills and this requires a deeper level of commitment which may include things like um, in, enrolling in a uh, high commitment Bible study, taking part in a mission trip, uh, traveling to the Holy Land to, to learn more about our faith and where it came from, um, committing yourself long term to some sort of leadership position or teaching Sunday school or being a, a permanent volunteer in an ongoing mission that requires this kind of uh, loving service to happen. The goal of all of this um, isn't just to learn how to paddle around in the deep water and say, look at me, look how I can swim. The goal of Christian discipleship is to grow mature disciples, to grow a community of faith that gets to a point where we can engage in search and rescue. Uh, the goal is to become like the lighthouse standing out there in the risky place against the, the waves of winter uh, so that we cast a beacon of God's love out in the world where, where people can recognize it and be drawn to it. Um, well, searching. Where are you in your search to grow in faith and love of Jesus Christ? I, invite you, like the wise men of yesteryear, uh, to proceed on the journey to grow in your own love for Jesus Christ. Amen.